It's having a moment. So we're freestyling it today. Not as in rapping, because nobody ever wants to hear that. I can freestyle. You can't. <laughs> you can't. No, we can't. And if he ever tells you you can't, he's lying. <laughs> anyway, so we're just freestyling it. We're just driving around. We're going to see what we can get into. Yeah, I figured just, just go. You know, and we ended up just getting in the car and going. And I got off of an exit, and we're just going to see what we can find that you won't find. Or that you wouldn't even think to look for. Yeah. So we'll see. Sometimes these turn out to be really fun. Yeah. So we're going to start off in like the Roswell, Georgia area, maybe Marietta, Alberta. And then where this, <laughs> and then where this <laughs> car goes. And we got 52 miles to empty. So that's what we're going to stop. 52 miles. So we're calling today's vlog, Shit You Just Happened Up On. And this is cool. I mean, the, the store's closed, but still, this is cool. I always wonder where rich people go to get those like really big <laughs> statue statuary that they have, you know, like at their gates and whatever. Answer that question here. Y'all, this is some next little shit. Look, it's a werewolf. It's, it's a werewolf with a little werewolf pup. Look. <laughs> It's me when I dance. Hey, Tommy. Yeah. We need to get this fountain for the front yard. All right. Maybe well, I know it would. Back there too? Yes. I want the werewolf. Let's just get it off. <laughs> the iron horses. <laughs> the world's best antique store atlanta georgia usa i mean i would say that that's a tall order but then looking at what they got are they, are look they at that antiques? bench i don't know or is this you got a statue of liberty or is this art deco no <laughs> i mean I want those on each side of the porch, right? Flying lines. The fountain at the front, and then the real life depiction of what my guardian angel probably looks like on a daily basis. Can we put the werewolf in the bedroom? Um, I don't know if it fit with our ceiling. I mean, we'll figure it out. We could probably, uh, you know, clear up some attic space, put a hole in the roof. That's marvelous. I know. Isn't that beautiful, though? Look at that. Yeah, I pretty think the, uh, I think these are marble, too. Yep, this is... Oh, man, angels. smooth. They even did the creases inside of her. Hand. Yep. I Just, think these are marble, too. You know, driving around. Well, Got you your think, goddesses. Think yeah, let me get... Oh, yeah. Feel it. It's smooth, right? Yeah. Feel it right here. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you, got, you got your eagle and your majestic clients. Holy cow. That's what I married, y'all. That is just wow. I really like the statue. I do too. But I like the horses too, and I, I love the werewolf. <laughs> But that is the name of the place, Red Baron Antiques in Roswell, Georgia. Look, it's Vinny. He's even got that look of confusion. It's about, about the right height. Our dog, he's so beautiful. He's all looks. Ah! All right, well. That was pretty cool for just riding around and freestyling. Freestyle. All right. Well. Welcome back. Freestyling. Yep. This is where we ended up. So we're at Bullet Call. Um, I don't think it's open, of course. It says it is, but it's not. But I got this 
handy dandy little brochure here. You can do an audio tour. Yep, I'm thinking I'm about to plug that in my phone and see what all it tells us. And uh, don't know nothing about it. We've seen it, pulled over. Yep, seen a brown sign and pulled over. There's no website for it. It is on the Georgia Parks or uh, this National Registry of Historic yeah. Places in 1971. But apparently when it's open, it's eight bucks to do like the tour of the house and stuff. Yeah. But I guess, I'm guessing the grounds That's kind of is way free. Uh, uh, we'll find out yep. how old the house is. I have no idea. This was, like I said, pulled up. I found this little brochure in a little box over there. We'll figure it out. Like we always do. Yep. We'll go ahead. So it is open and we do get to tour the house. Yes! It's so exciting. And it's $5, y'all. $5. That's not bad. Holy cow. I'm so excited. in New York City. He was really tough on crime there. And as the, um, uh, I believe the governor of New York, very much a very hawkish person and people in the Republican Party when this sort of curtailed his power and said, you know what? We're going to give him a position that has prestige but no teeth whatsoever, which is the vice presidency. And of course, McKinley gets assassinated and he gets into the office. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, uh, sort of a uh, huge turn of fate, and so. So this is what he was telling us. The master bedrooms were often on the main floor so that in the event that there was any uh, late night guests, the man of the house could uh, greet the guests. Greet the guests. So, uh, pretty cool place. It was built in 1839. Look like a nursery now. Well, it said it could have been a nursery or a playroom. Later, it could have been a morning room where the family mm. could enjoy the breakfast on a cold winter's day. So, I said this would have been the warming room when they brought the food up from the kitchen. And that fireplace might have caught on fire at one time. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it on it. So, that's pretty cool. And then this room. is the dining room. This is the room where President Theodore Roosevelt's parents got married on December 22nd, 1853. That's pretty cool. And then along came little Theodore later. <laughs> I know, isn't that cool? Tommy, would you like to have some tea and crumpets? I don't know. I was thinking about the bourbon and the cigar. <laughs> <laughs> We're going down into the uh, kitchen area. It was rare that houses for this time had indoor kitchens because of fire. But this one does. I'm gonna turn this off so I can watch where I'm going and not die. Well, and yes, little boys did have to wear dresses until they were toilet trained. <laughs> well, I mean, that kind of makes sense, don't it? Sucks we can't go in there. <laughs> you imagine how hot it'd be down here? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's 
storage danger. Yep. A root cell. Yep. So we're in the upstairs bedroom now, and this would have been a uh, Mitty Bullock's brother Irvine, his bed. I don't know why there'd be two beds in here for one person. Guess maybe if he had a pile. This was Mitty Bullock's room. This was uh, Theodore Roosevelt's mother's bedroom when she lived here. <laughs> those toilets right there we stayed at a cabin in the mountains uh year before last and they had a toilet that was it was a functioning toilet that was made inside of a chair that thing was disgusting it was so gross do not recommend Utility room, creaky ass floors. What's this? This is the family tree here. So, this was the dude who built the house. And these are from the Theodore Roosevelt collection. That was Minnie when she was young. Huh. And this is the family. Oh, this was Mitty's Bible. Oh, and there's your dance card. You know, when somebody's like, if my dance card is full. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Is that how it is? Like? Yeah. So my dance card is full. What is this? I mean, I know where it is, but this was the flag that was flown over Bullock Hall during President Roosevelt's visit in 1905. And our God was telling us this is so sad and tragic. Poor Theodore Roosevelt, his mother, Mitty, died on Valentine's Day, which was also the same day that his wife died. So he lost his mother and his wife on the same day, which is what inspired him to go out west. Alice Lee. Who's Alice Lee? Oh, really? She died in 1884. There was the wedding. That was uh, Theodore Roosevelt Sr. So apparently this family had a long history of military service. Like, long. Surgical tools. Ooh, dental kit. That thing is I'm, massive. I'm not sure, guys. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure these are lightning rods. They don't want this tree to get struck by lightning. So they got these. Cables. Oh yeah, it goes all the way up. And here's one here. They don't want the tree to get hit by lightning, so they ground it. Oh, hey, look, they're growing mullion. I grow mullion too. Mullion is wonderful for uh, any type of respiratory issues. So 
Pretty little garden. Lob lolly, yes. Well, that's one right there. The lob lolly pine. It looks like a pine tree. They got mullion all over here. See, there's some more. The children's garden. You didn't give them much to play with in that children's garden. It's just uh, stuff. The herb garden. Hey, rosemary. Got some of that too. Not a whole lot in the herb garden either. Some lavender over there. I don't want to walk through there, so walk around. There's some rosemary. More. And there's lavender that there's some sage. So our guide recommended coming to see the ruins of the old Roswell mill because the historical value. <laughs> Didn't tell us there wasn't enough work. Yeah, and it looks like literally everybody else in the free world is doing the exact same thing. There are so many people out here. I mean, like, so many people. This is almost like a Frog Street Market. <laughs> mm. Yeah, apparently the mill back there is also shopping. Which we're not going to do. We don't shop. No. Unless it's for rocks and boots. So we are not a cemetery, Jeff. <laughs> but this ties into where we were at a while ago. So we're gonna find some of the original members. Of the founding families. Of the founding families of uh, Roswell. We wanted to go to the actual founder cemetery, but it was back over there where the uh, mill and all that was, and there's no parking we're at all. We're still gonna say possibly over there. I don't know. Well, it's over there. Anyway, the founding cemetery, the one we're not going to, was uh, <laughs> was closed in 1860, and then this is a continuation of that. So, as the description read, this cemetery you see here was once separated from the church over there by a stream, which is now replaced by a highway as you see there. So we're gonna take a look around and see if we can find any names that we recognize from the house we just toured. Although we do know most of the Bullocks are buried over in the founding section. But still, this is really cool. Y'all know how much I love cemeteries. So we'll see what we can find. Now I'm just saying, if you have a tad bit of Irish history mixed with some Americanized slang. Feckery. <laughs> what kind of feckery what is kind this? Of feckery? <laughs> oh, I think I changed my name. So here's one of the founding family. The son of the one of the founders of Roswell. Found one. I'm sure we'll find more. That one's kind of elaborate. Yeah, it is, ain't it? He's a daughter. A little older, though. Not a kid. Found a plaque. Maybe give us some idea. So what are we looking at? These are unknown graves. Oh, so over there where we just were. Huh. I think. Yeah, I think that, that is. So there's another one of the founding families, a uh, Barrington, or she must have married into the Barrington family. These are almost completely covered up. They need to fix that. Not cool. I guess that was the big dude. First settler of Roswell and the president of the Roswell factories. Barrington King. Little Hattie. Firstborn and only daughter of James and Francis King. 
our little lamb by God's own lamb redeemed. So these are the children that I'm assuming died of the scarlet fever outbreak. And then I think it comes into the unknowns. Yeah. But that's sad. What? Ashley. Oh yeah, Tommy found it. The Founder's Cemetery. That's what I do. And you find stuff. It even says it right there, Founder's Cemetery. Got nice parking. I'm so excited. Woo! -hoo. So I got a challenge for Tommy. Well, considering, and y'all don't get over crazy here, but considering there's 28 graves, I think I can find it. But what but is the it? The first one is Charles Irvin Bullock. He's two years old, died of scarlet fever. In the summer of 1841. So you think you're going to be able to find it? Yep. Town founder, Roswell's King, died February 15, 1844, and lies beneath a monument erected in his memory by his children. Huh. And we will find it. All right, off we go. So in Founder Cemetery, from what I'm gathering, the uh, which is odd, the slaves were actually buried in here with them. Uh, you know, as as usual, in most of the uh, old cemeteries we go to, they'll have a different section or a completely different graveyard. But they were actually buried in the same. I don't know what that is, but anyway, it was buried in the same one. Here's one. It's um, Daddy Luke. He was the slave of Major James Bullock. Which was the house we were just at. Right. And uh, Daddy Luke died at 105 years of what? age. What? Yep. And uh, they say his great-granddaughter, he was a mighty man, large and muscle, muscular. He was strong. He was respectful, polite man. Get him made chair, so. He was the butler, carriage driver. He was everything, pretty much. He was the right-hand man. Why is there a brick missing? <laughs> was there money under it? Oh. While probing for unmarked graves, they discovered and exposed this line of handmade brick. Awesome. Let's go take a look. Yes. This cemetery was the first cemetery in Roswell. From 1840 to 1860, this was where people were buried. And then they moved, they started going to the other spot that we were just left. Show you after this. <laughs> Get up here and take a look. All right, coming. Ooh, daffodil. This dude was the founder of Roswell. Uh, he was the founder of the village, which bears his name. A man of great energy, industry, and perseverance. Rigid integrity, truth, and justice something enjoyed optimism the optimism i don't know anyway apparently he's a fun dude <laughs> that was too easy you suck And you can still read the inscription good? Uh, yeah. It don't say the year. Two years, nine months old. Mm -hmm. Bless the baby. It's uh, pretty cool. Oh, that's the James Bull. That's the house, dude, the house that we just went to. Yep, stone replaced in 2014. The original's at Bullock Hall. I didn't, no, did you? No. I seen it. 
Where? It was upstairs in that left room. It was in the floor. It was in a glass case. Oh, I didn't see it. Jesus Christ, woman. Did you get a picture of it? No. You idiot. I hate when you can't tell who it was. There's really not many in here at all. They're right. Yeah. Where they have more room. And then, y'all remember we did the other cemetery in Roswell, which is huge. We'll put a link. <laughs> right there. And uh, that one was huge. And I did find the oldest uh, grave in that grave one. Grave in that one. Yep. What's in the box, Tommy? What's in the box? Are you going to open it? Oh, no. Dude, open it. Come on. Seriously. I wonder if that's somebody's ashes. I don't know. Let's put it back. Yeah. <laughs> and let's even put a rock on top of it. Don't come home with us. <laughs> I just want you. Don't want it. It's like a damn pizza oven. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Bye, ghosts. Don't follow us home. So we didn't find the brick. No, I don't know where that was at. And we didn't find Daddy Luke. Yeah. To be fair, 90% of the uh, headstones were unreadable. To be fair. To be fair. I don't know. Uh -huh. Well, we found the first cemetery of Roswell. So. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Found the, well, technically, we found the first person burying Roswell. Yep. Because if that was the first cemetery, that was the first, first person. Burial. Yeah. We're trying one more time to come down here and see the old man. Yeah, mill. don't look promising. Nope. I mean, there's just, there's literally nowhere to park. We might have a spot. Maybe. Probably not, though. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe this might be happening, y'all. Mill Street. I'm going to give him the name Tommy. Never give up. Robinson. <laughs> it's like, um... So these two dudes. Barrington King and Roswell King. <clears throat> I think it was a sawmill. I'm not sure. Had a cotton. There's a picker house. So what did we do? Let's see. It's one of the earliest textile mills. Yeah. So that was when they first started texting. <laughs> employed 30 hands and achieved a capital of 80,000 by the mid 1840s turned out shirting Onsberg, a coarse heavy cloth sheeting and yarn yeah. and at the end at the beginning of the civil war they owned uh, two cotton mills a flour mill a blacksmith shop a general store machine shop and apartments and houses for over 400 mill operatives I don't know what that is, but it's cool. It's art. Look it up. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. It's a running female torch bearing Olympic athlete with boat bulldozer tooth. Position it near the top of the sculpture. So that's a female athlete, and this is a, a bulldozer tooth. Huh. Well, it, it's not as old as it looks, so. No. It's still cool. Yeah. Old mill? Yeah, there's parts of the mill. That small way it's going up. Oh, okay. It's all the rusty stuff. Way down there. Yeah. And that pipe that runs across, see it runs all the way back up through here? Uh -huh. I bet you they're catching head pressure just like at the uh, Mingus Mill. Yeah. They're probably catching the head pressure that water line goes down and back up. And it gives you some type of hydro power. Hmm. No, it's going go in you no can, way. Yeah, so... It looks better from up here anyway. It actually does. You can kind of see more. I don't know if he would have spotted everything we just spotted if uh, mm -hmm. we went down there. So It looks like that pipe. See how big it is over here? No, because your arm's in the way. <laughs> yeah. And then and it comes back up over here. See how small it is? Yeah. Head pressure. Yeah. Play by the rules. <laughs> the rules are for girls. Baby, no. 
having a moment. Yeah, it looked like it. Freestyling. So we got to see some of the coolest stuff. Locally. That I didn't even know was around here. And I come through here all the time. But yeah, freestyler. So we run across three historic houses. We picked one to go into. Because I was like, that one's pretty cool. First, we didn't think it was open. And then, voila. Score. It was open. And not only was it open, I picked the house that pretty much started Roswell. Imagine that. I don't know about that. It pretty much did. I mean, it's right here. There's three houses within a mile. Not a mile. Yeah. That pretty much were the founders of Roswell. But you did pick the one that had the connection to Theodore Roosevelt. I did. See? Which me, I thought was pretty cool. Me and Theo, we go way back. <laughs> Y'all BFFs. But, uh, you know, without without the meal Roswell would have never been here and, that is true and that's why it was very important for Sherman to to have his people destroy that meal because it was supplying goods to the Confederacy, the Confederacy. so he had that meal destroyed which kind of cheating but whatever you don't fight fair Tommy you fight to win but yeah that this has been a very interesting day. I've come to this intersection probably, I'm going to say, a hundred times a year. And never have been down there. Never noticed the the historic houses. So, Good find. All right. <laughs> so after we toured downtown Roswell, we went to the Jerusalem Bakery and Grill. Highly recommended. I got the steak shawarma. And I got the uh, something kebab. I can't remember what I can't it was. Remember, I couldn't even it had lamb anymore. in it. It had lamb in it. But the bakery is right there. And then the other, I mean, it's all in one little area. It's got a grocery store attached yeah, to it. It's uh, highly recommended. Fries were glorious. Glorious. They as, were. They were as really good. Lori would say. And it, mine, had, mine had beets in it. And I have never liked beets. But those beets were so good. They made me a believer that beets could actually be okay yep and price was like 20 25 bucks and so not yeah. bad at all nope this place though that was probably my favorite part of the day i yep. mean if you ever were <laughs> wonder where in the hell you can go get a big ass werewolf right there <laughs> you can get one <laughs> i tell you what <laughs> i love it i loved it all every bit of it the horses look real and guess what you ain't got to feed them so you can put them on your farm nobody ever knows right I call them rust. <laughs> they were rusties. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so Bullet Call was really cool. Yes. I wish. Well, I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't say I wish. I don't know why <clears throat> they had it roped off the way that they did when they had other rooms that you could like freely walk around. But I wish we'd have been able to explore it more fully but five bucks man and yep, it was worth it well worth it especially and the connection to teddy roosevelt i mean who knew i i grew up or there's teddy my, bear i did most of my growing up in georgia and had no idea that teddy roosevelt had a connection yeah, here it, it was uh a very interesting and just to pick that one too and end up with the connection there so that's pretty cool but our tour guide told us to go down to the mill which i always thought by passing there it was just a place to go shopping but there you go. It's not. It was nice. Man, it was so crowded. I know it doesn't look like it because the way I took some of the pictures, I tried to time it where some people weren't walking like right in front of the camera. Yeah, we try to keep the people with warrants out of the picture. So. <laughs> and I love a little free library. Yeah. It's a, It was a great little area down there. I could see people going down there, spending the day, getting something yeah, going down beautiful. by the river. Yeah, it, it really was. was. really cool. And then Founder Cemetery, and I did not get a picture of the other cemetery, so these are just all kind of lumped together, but Founder Cemetery was, I thought, really cool. Yeah. I thought it actually had a cooler vibe than yeah, it the did. Presbyterian Yeah, it, it was It was situated cemetery. in the right area and the way it was, you know, going to be laid out, but then they decided they was going to run out of room, so, yeah, they moved it over to this area here, and 
like I said, right down the road is that other cemetery we went to, and it's huge. I don't remember how many. Yeah. Acres oh it my was, gosh. Yeah, that thing was massive. It's huge. So they kind of spread it out over like three or four different cemeteries down there. But it was really interesting to find find the founder cemetery and some of the founders that some were, of the places done the Dunwoodies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean. I, I I thought that was cool to know yeah. or to see where you know some of these town names originated right, right. from. I never when when I read the guy's name and it was Roswell's King. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? Is, why they, he's got a big ass head? No, they don't call him the King of Rock. But it's I okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you get it. I get it. All right. Well, thanks for coming along. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when we upload new videos. Till next time. Bye-bye. Stay, Stay spicy. spicy.